All right, it is two o'clock, so I say we go ahead and get started. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. I hope you're having a great summer, even though it is approximately a thousand degrees outside on any given day. Um, but I'm glad you're here today joining us, um, hopefully from somewhere cool and air conditioned. Uh, I'm Dr. Allison Boyer, Director of the Center for Teaching and Learning, and um, I'm excited uh, for our session today about accessible PDF creation. Uh, for our presenter today, we have Dr. Kimberly Wren, who has some very special connections to accessibility. Um, and we're also joined by ELC Director Pamela Darling Fascio, who's going to help moderate. And she's also one of our college's resident accessibility experts. So she will also be here to help answer any questions along with Kimberly. So um, without further ado, uh, Kimberly, I'm going to pass it off to you. Good morning, everyone. Well, wait, it's not morning. I've been here all day. So <laughs> good afternoon. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm an anthropology department. I Accessibility is important to me. I have a sister who's legally blind. So this is something that I, I take personally. And um, I hear complaints from her all the time with her screen readers not being able to read stuff and her having a hard time with documents. And so um, I'm excited to have the opportunity to be able to participate in this workshop. And let me know if I'm moving pretty fast because I'm so used to just, <laughs> you know, um, feel free to ask questions. I will have some time at the end for questions. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I have a lot of things going on with my screens too. Let's see. So first we're gonna just, I'm gonna show you all just an overview. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes, okay, great. All right. Yes, we can see it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to create accessible PDFs, but also how to remediate them. Um, and we have Allison Boyer from the Center for <coughs> Learning at Collin College. And we're also partnering with eLearning Center here is, is here, is also here as well, and then myself. So we're going to go through everything on this list. The only one on this list that I'm just gonna show you how to do it, because you're not gonna oh. counter it, encounter it as much is assigning a primary language. I'm an anthropology, so I look up German, Spanish, all kinds of PDFs. And so often in my field, we have a PDF that's in two, sometimes more languages. So this is something that I have to do all the time, kind of tell it which ones I want it to read. And then I also artifact some of them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna start with a Word document. So let me, minimize this because I have my Word document up. All right, so in order to create an accessible PDF, you start with the Word document and you need to create an accessible Word document. So here I have a Word document that I started on and it's not accessible. I have, scroll back to the top, I just have basic headings, but I'm not actually labeling them as headings or defining them as headings using Oh, this. Kimberly, oh, we're still here? looking at the PowerPoint. Oh, okay. So maybe I'm sharing my share. Can you see this now? No, you'll probably have to stop your share and do a new share. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what I was worried about. I wonder if I can see. So I'm just going to share an entire screen. Do y'all see my Word document now? Yes. 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 Okay. I shared the screen. So everything on this side should show up each time. Okay. So here I have a Word document. You have to start here when you're going to create an accessible PDF. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that your headings are correct. I know that in Adobe or whenever you have a PDF, they like titles. So most of the time when we're creating an accessible Word document, we don't really put a title in there. We think we go immediately to heading one and all these headings are ranked. So heading one would be the highest level, level heading and heading six would be the lowest. Um, but when you put this in Ally and you run that accessible, that Ally checker, it's gonna ask you once it's a PDF, where's your title? So you have to enter your title twice. So the first time 
is making this accessibility workshop a title. Um, the easiest way to do this is click here and then you can have all of those headings here. So accessibility workshop is going to be my title. I like subtitles. So Colin College will be my subtitle. And then workshop is going to be my heading one. So I'm going to click on heading one over here. So then the next heading under that would be heading two, which is going to be tips on accessible on creating accessible PDFs. So I'm going to just click on this and then I'm going to go over here under styles and choose heading two. If I chose heading three, I would be skipping a level and it would alert me. And so I do have some ones I'm going to show you that are bad when, when we put it in ally so you can see what it's going to tell you if it's wrong. So we're going to do this right the first time and then we're going to correct some stuff. <laughs> okay, so this is now heading two. this. I want this to be a paragraph, so it's going to say normal. That means it's just a paragraph. That's how I want it. This, I want to be a heading, but I want it to be, I want it to fall under heading two. So it's going to be heading three. Everything has to go in order. So now I have heading three. And then here I have a list that's not labeled as a list. So it's just indented. And we do this all the time, but screen readers won't, won't catch it as a list. Okay, so we have to make this a list. So there are a couple ways to do that. You could just highlight this and then scroll up and just do this. And it'll automatically on, on the style column over here, change it to list paragraph. That's one way. That's probably the easiest way. I'm gonna undo. And the other way to do that is to just highlight it and scroll down to list paragraph. <laughs> and it does it for you, but it doesn't have those bullet points or if you wanted it to be a numbered list, it's not gonna show that, but it will read it as a list. I like bullet points or in this, because this isn't in a particular order. So I'm just gonna add them and then move it back over because I thought it was over too many tabs. So there's a couple ways to fix list. Alternative text also falls under tips on creating accessible PDFs. Remember this is heading two. So this is three, this will also be three because it's not going to go under how do I add or fix tags. This is just another title under tips on creating accessible PDFs. So I'm gonna click on anywhere on that and then click on heading three, okay? And alternate text. So whenever we have images in a document, whether it's a PDF, a Word document, PowerPoint, you need to have alternative text because screen readers will read that. Also, if your image is broken, it helps people know what you did have there because images break all the time. So let me check, do I have a question? Oh, looking at chat. All right, so here I have an image and I'm gonna do a couple of things to this image. First, I'm gonna right click it and I'm going to go to edit alt text. So a box will appear here over to the right. And I'm gonna just type, let's see, chimpanzees grooming each in a tree. Because that's what they're doing. Make sure it's something that, descriptive. Okay, so I'm going to close this out. It should be there. I always do this because I'm obsessive compulsive. I check and make sure that it's actually there. It's still there. So now we've done that. There's something else that you might want to do because when you create, when you make this a PDF, it's going to make that process a little bit smoother. And most people don't do this, but include a caption. So you can insert a caption. I already have what I want right here, chimpanzees grooming each other. So I'm gonna copy this. So I'll have to type it again. And I'm gonna to go to insert caption. And then I'm just gonna paste it right here. And now I have a caption and it's gonna appear as a caption. It will not appear as like paragraph, it's a caption. So the, the point of making things accessible is making sure that screen readers know what everything is in the document. There's no confusion. It reads it appropriately. It reads it in the correct order. When you have those headings in a certain order, it, it will follow that order. And it will also make good bookmarks. And we'll see what that looks like when we convert this into a PDF. So I'm going to actually delete this. I don't need that anymore. So now we have an image with alt text and we have an image with the caption, okay? Bookmarks, that's a part. This heading of, of header, heading three is correct. So I'm not going to do anything with that. But then I skip four and five and I have heading six. So that's not good. 
this is, I don't know, I need to move in my office. Okay, lights just went out. So this is, this should also be heading three. So I'm gonna go over here to styles and I'm gonna change it to heading three. Okay, I want this to be a paragraph. So it's saying normal, that's correct. I want this to be heading three as well. So I'm gonna change that to heading three. And then this one's already correct. This table is already correct. This, I mean, this list is already correct. I only needed to show it to you once, but I have one that's wrong and one that's correct for a reason when we get into Adobe. I mean, when we get into how to fix it in Adobe, then you'll see why. Summary of graded work. So I'm gonna do the table, instead of just making this a heading right off the bat, I'm gonna do it a little bit different. So first I'm gonna fix the table. So here I have a table. And when I click on this table, Move this out of my way. Table tools and then in the row, the menu bar at the top is going to be highlighted. So I can click on table tools and it tells me that I have not selected a header row or header column up in the upper left corner right over here. My mouse is over here. So I have a header row and it's assignments, points, and tables. And I also have a header column, chapter quizzes, labs, discussions, midterm, and final. So I'm going to go here and click header row. And I'm going to click header column, the first column, it make, which makes this one a heading, a header column. Okay. Then I'm going to do something else. I'm going to click on table properties. And I'm going to go to row. And if I had, you know, like many times when we're making a syllabus, we have really long calendars for our students and they'll move to maybe one or two pages, I mean, two or three pages. So the table just keeps going. So you really want that top row to appear on each page because it's easier for screen readers. And it's also easier just for people who, you know, so they know where they are. So they're not trying to figure out what's in which column when, it, when they're on page two. So this is where you would check repeat as header row at the top of each page. So what it's gonna do if this were longer, every page would have assignments, points and totals, okay? Also, tables should have, they should have alt text and they should have a title. So for my title, I'm gonna type summary of graded work. And then for my description, I'm actually gonna add what I wrote down here. So I'm gonna hit okay and go back. I'm gonna copy this, or I'm actually just gonna cut it and then go back to properties, go back to alt text. Summary of graded work is there's my title. And now I have a description. Okay. And I'm just going to hit okay. And now for summary of graded work, this, this heading actually falls under creating and fixing tables. So creating and fixing tables is heading three. So this needs to be heading four. Okay. So I'm going to click on heading four. I'm going to do the same thing here first. I'm going to just click on the table so that I can then access table tools up on the menu bar. Click on that. I don't have a heading column, but I do have a heading row. So I'm only going to select header row on this one. Okay. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to table properties again. And I've already entered the title and I've already entered a description, but I don't actually want this. If this was a really long table, I do not want it breaking. I don't want one row to kind of break and be all wonky on my document. So you always want to keep this one unchecked. <laughs> you don't really want that to happen. You really want it to stop in a cell and then start over in a new cell on the next page. You don't want it to break. It's, it's weird and it, it's just difficult to, to look at. But I do want this to repeat as a header row at the top of the page. So I'm going to have to highlight this table to select that. So I'm going to right click table properties and click that, keep that, keep repeat as header row. Remember, unclick allow row to break across page. We already have our alt text, so we're good to go. And now for final grade, that's a header or heading under creating and fixing tables. So it too will be heading four. Okay, so this is three. These are four. So both of these tables are now accessible. Now I'm back to a heading three, formatting list. And then this is the next, 
accessibility workshop will have, but this is heading two. It's the same heading level as the first workshop that we have up here, which is also heading two. Okay. So ideally, this should be a perfect um, document. There's one last thing that I need to do, and I'm going to go to file. And then over here, it has title. This is where if I were to just upload this to my course and then I clicked ally, it's going to say I didn't have a title. Once I've converted it to a PDF, it's going to say your PDF is missing a title. So add my title here. So now I'm going to go back. So this should be perfect. So I'm going to save this. Do you have any questions before I save it? I'm going to save it and I'm going to put it in Ally and we're going to look at it. And then I'm going to open a bad one in Ally and we're going to fix it. Um, well, actually, I'm going to save this as, as a PDF because I have to do all of this to make an accessible PDF. You really have to start with an accessible Word document. Um, but I do want to show you what it's going to look like in Ally. So, uh, well, sorry, let's see. First, I'm going to create a PDF. So, oh, sorry. Do you want PDF? Yes. Okay. So it's important to not save as a PDF, but to actually hit create PDF. Those are two different things. You want to hit create PDF. So I'm going to create this as accessible Word document needs work, and I'm just going to put the number two after it. And so now I have this PDF. And it should pull up. So ideally, this should be a perfect PDF. So I'm going to upload this into my class. So I'm going to pull my class over. I'm going to share this other screen and show you all. And then we're going to open up one that has all the same problems, but we'll open it in Adobe and fix those problems in Adobe like we did in Word. So if you're creating an accessible PDF, you really want to start out with an accessible Word document, then you have a perfect PDF and you don't have to worry about it. But sometimes you, you pulled someone else's work from online and you need to fix it. You need to fix their PDF so you don't have an original document. So we're going to do that here in a second. Okay, so I'm going to share my other screen. So I'm going to stop share and then share screen one. Okay, so now I'm going to upload the document we just created. Before I do that, um, I'm in one of my courses and I got here by clicking on files over in this column here. So now this document and we just created this one I'm going to upload the PDF. It's uploaded but it's going to take a minute for Ally to kick in so I just hit reload this page. And here if I click on this it says that it's perfect. Now I'm going to show you one that's not perfect. <laughs> and all the notes that we'll show you, okay? Can you all see this screen, by the way? Yes? Yes. Yep. Okay, good. Okay, let's see. So let's look at one that's not perfect that I've already put in here. So this PDF right here needs a lot of work. So let's say I don't have the original document, right? And I borrowed some, I've taken this document from online or somebody sent it to me and there's no way for me to get the original document. So the good thing about Ally is that it will tell you what the issues are, most of them. So you can go here and you can click on all issues and it'll tell you the PDF contains images that are missing a description. So this, that means it doesn't have alt text. Excuse me. It says the PDF contains tables that are missing headers. This one right here. Um, it tells me that this PDF doesn't have a title, right? They love those titles. And it's crazy because when you do it in Word, even if I didn't go to file and then enter the title, it would be an accessible Word document. But the moment I create it and make it a PDF, P the PDF or Adobe 
um, or ally really wants you to create it in the file under the file tab and not just in the document. So it's kind of an extra step, but it's okay. And it also tells me that I have some headings in the PDF that don't begin at level one. I'm actually missing a level one in my original document. This is actually heading three, and then this goes to six. I did that on purpose so we could fix it. And the headings in this document don't follow a logical order because this is three and then six. So we're missing four and five. So it's telling me generally what my issues are. Okay. So I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna open that document in Adobe. So I'm gonna share, I'm gonna open two. So we're gonna go back here. And I already have it opened. Um, okay. Can you all see this screen? Yes. Okay. I so, have a, a question. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. um, I, I, do we have to to be able to? Because I can, I have a, a way to access PDFs, but I can't change them. <laughs> so you, do I have to uh, get it from the college or Adobe where I can actually? Yes, so you need Adobe um, Acrobat, Adobe DC Pro. So you have, we have access to that. Um, In so Cougar Web, there's a link for uh, the Creative Cloud, the Adobe Creative Cloud. And if you just log in with your call and credentials, it should allow you to download that. And where is that located in Cougar Web? I believe it's on the My Workplace tab. Okay. And it's called Create a Cloud? A Adobe Creative. Oh, creative. Cloud. I'm sorry. Yeah. And that Adobe includes a creative. lot of the Adobe tools. Yeah. Creative cloud. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and if you have trouble, you can always email the help desk or the ELC and we uh -huh. can help you get it too. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. So with the PDF, the first thing you want is also obviously to have the right Adobe because you will not be able to do this because you won't have the accessibility tool. But let's pretend that this isn't here. I would go to tools. And then I would actually have to add this accessibility tool and it would appear over here. You need that to fix the PDF, okay? Um, there's something else that I would do, just makes it easier whenever we start fixing everything, is go to view and then go to show hide navigation panes. And I like to have reading order over here on the side, which I already have. And I also, you need tags over and over on the side to make it easier for you to fix the tags. Tags are headings, paragraphs, lists, all of those things are tags, okay? So I already have both of those over on the left-hand side of my document, so, but that's how you would add them, okay? All right, so that's there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click on this accessibility icon and then click on accessibility check. And I want all of these checked. I want this checked and I want these boxes checked. And I'm gonna run a, it's basically gonna give me a little report over on the side. So this tells me what issues are broken. The blue are things that I need to check like reading order. My tags are there. I have some tags, but they're not actually correct because these really are just showing up as paragraphs and we'll see that in a second. Alternative text issues. It's pointing out my figure right here. I have some table issues, all the same issues that I had in the Word document are really, you know, here showing me as well. Um, I have some header issues. All right, so in order to fix this, though, I need to click on this little icon here, and that's tags. So I click on this. I want this to be a title. It's in, in a title in Adobe is actually just paragraph. It actually is just that. Um, and I said, so Colin College, I could set it in Word as a subtitle. I could just leave it alone because in Adobe, it really is only gonna show it as a paragraph, but it's the headings that are gonna be important here. So right now, Workshop, if I click here, it's gonna highlight which tag, these are tags, P is for paragraph, it's related to. So this first one is paragraph, that's fine. The second one is Colin College, that's also okay. But this one, I don't want it to be a paragraph, I want it to be a heading, and that's heading one. So the way I normally change it is I just click on it and I'm gonna show you the other way to change it. I just type H1 and I'll hit enter. And now I have my heading one. Now, that's because I've been doing it a while. <laughs> so if I weren't doing it all the time, then let's see, 
I undo. Okay, I'm going to make it a paragraph again. Okay. So I could just click on it, go to properties, go to type, and scroll all the way down. Oh, wait, I'm too far. Go all the way up to heading level one. Same thing is going to show up here, H1. Okay. And then just hit close. And now this is heading one, like I want it to be. This needs to be, which is here, this needs to be heading two. So I'm just going to type H2 and hit enter. Now that's heading two. This is correct. It is a paragraph. This is incorrect. This should be heading three. So I would do the same thing here. H3. Ah, capital. Okay. Now I'm going to fix this list because this is off. So first I need to say that this is a list. So I need to add a new tag. So I know where I want it to go. I want it to go under heading three. Paragraph. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to add new tag. And it already knows what I want to do because I did this earlier. <laughs> so I want to add a list. Okay. So don't worry about it highlighting everything because I need to tell this tag what the list is. This is just saying what heading it goes under. Okay. So this list is going to go under this heading, which is where I want it to go. So I need to tell this list tag which items are a list. So I'm going to highlight, well, I'm not going to highlight it here. I'm actually going to highlight the paragraphs that correspond to these list items. So I'm going to click on one and I'm going to hold down the shift key and scroll all the way down till I got everything in that list. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to properties. And then I'm going to change this to list item. List have list items under them. Okay. And now that's list item, but it's at the same level as the list and it needs to be in the list. So I'm going to keep this highlighted and I'm going to move it into that list. So now it's following under that list. So if I'm going to close this, all of those would disappear. So I know it's under this list. That's an appropriate list in a, in a PDF. And that's how you would remediate that. So I have alternate text. This should be heading three. Fix this. And four. And then for my image here, I need to correct this. So I'm going to open it. It has it as a figure. Um, I actually like to correct this here. So if you right click, so I went to the, the actual report. So if I right click here and I hit fix, it'll let me type my alternate text here. Pansies, other in a, and then I can just hit save and close. So now I go back to my tags. That's fixed. So I can close that. Um, I could leave this here as a paragraph. It's really up to you. I like to make them captions in Word documents. Let's see, I do want to scroll down to a table because we need to some time on that. So here's my table. It has nothing that it should have. So I'm going to click on table editor and I have a table row and a table column. So I'm going to click on the first one, shift, click everything on the first row, right click, cell properties, and tell this that it type is a header cell and it's for row and hit OK. Now that's corrected. And I'm going to do the same thing with this column. Hold down the shift key and click on all of them. Right click, table cell properties. It's a header cell, it's a header column cell. So I fixed that table. Okay. And then I would do the same thing here for just the row. Um, let's see. I think. Yeah, so there are many other things to fix, but I wanted to make sure I at least fixed things one time in Adobe. Do y'all have any questions? Oh, I do want to also show you all.
primary so titles, you would go to file because sometimes you get a title and it will insert a title for you and it's awkward and you can just type your title here. So I just went to file and then properties and the description screen. I can also fix my language here. If I go to advanced, my language is here. I can change it to English. Okay. Any questions? I guess I need to look at the chat. Actually, someone was asking if um, we'd be able to share the PowerPoint that you had at the beginning. Um, yeah, I mean, the PowerPoint, it, it, it just has what we're going to cover today. <laughs> yeah. And then that. thank you screen. But yeah, you can have it. Um, because we're going to have the next workshop, I'm going to cover how to make PowerPoints accessible as well. Yeah. So, so that's in July. Yeah, that's because um, Sharon was asking about that too. Yeah, we will. Kimberly is going to do another workshop just like this, another 30 minute workshop. That'll be for uh, creating a little bit more about Word documents, but also PowerPoint. Um, on the uh, in the Word document one, yes. Are, do you at all address the problem of if you're trying to teach a certain citation style to students and you can't mm -hmm. have <laughs> headers and and things like that, where you just basically have title and that's it, or like a, a works cited page or whatever? Well, on a works cited page, you would have a header and then you would have paragraphs, and then you would also I know because you need certain spaces. So you yeah. would have to tell Adobe, you would have to tell Adobe that you're, you have spaces that you want, you don't want a screen reader to read, but it's just gonna read the citation as a paragraph, that's okay. But it's the spaces that many, you know, many styles require certain types yeah. of spacing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's where you would have, um, let me see, if you go to tags, let's say that this was a space, uh -huh. I would click on reading order. And this is also a good way to make sure that your document is being read in the correct order. Oh, number one means that's going to be read first. This is going to uh -huh. be read second, third. So that's how you check that. Um, but let's say there's something on here I didn't want it to read, like a space. Say six is a space. I would click on six and I would make it a background or an artifact. And it would just completely disappear from the tags over here and the screen reader wouldn't pick it up. So all those spaces in your reference page, you would need to do that because they would give, it would assign it a number and you're in a screen reader would read blank after every reference. So it'll say Jones, blah, blah, blah. And then it would go blank. And then it would say <laughs> Johnson, blah, 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 and then it would go blank. So that's probably going to be the biggest thing. You would just have a header and then, and then paragraphs and fix the blanks, remove them. So the screen reader just flows better. Okay. Okay. And you, is there, I'm guessing you'll show a way to do that in Word when we get to Word. In Word, um, you don't want, so I don't know how to fix blanks in Word. I don't know. I'd have to, I don't know if you can. I, I usually don't. I usually try not to have spaces. It just makes it flow better generally. Do you have oh, something you want to add? Yeah, I, I have not found a way to have it, to, to mark it as an artifact or background like you can in Adobe. Oh. Yeah, so I don't I don't know how to do that in in Word because I like to give my students examples of work cited. I'm an English professor. <laughs> work cited mm -hmm. pages MLA style, and there's there's got to be those spaces there for the indentation. Yes. Um. Yeah, I don't know how to do. I mean, maybe in your original Word document, you could have it set up to where it automatically has the spacing when you just hit enter. You know, like sometimes you can just set it automatically to have a certain yeah. amount of space. You and can, then, when you modify a style, you can put how much space appears before and after the paragraph. So you could just add more space after, which wouldn't add a physical space, but it would just provide more spacing. Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. Maybe I'll get <laughs> some clarity. I'm sorry, I'm a little confused by the modifying part modifying this style. So in Microsoft Word, all those headings that Kimberly was picking, like heading one, maybe uh -huh. you like that. You need to use heading one as your first heading, but yeah. you don't like that it's blue. Yeah. You can yeah. modify that heading so that it's no longer, and it will still have the heading tag on it, but it won't uh -huh. be blue anymore. 
So I you could also add more space after a certain heading. There's an option in the spacing area of Word that will allow for more spacing before or after a paragraph. And that would give you the extra spacing without creating a blank line. Okay, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm, did, are, did we get all the questions in the chat? I think somebody, someone asked if you would repeat the table issue. And I'm in, not sure. In Word or in Adobe? It came, the question came when you were in Adobe. So that's okay. where I think that that's coming okay. from. Okie dokie. So I didn't, I did not fix table two. So I know that there's something wrong with my table because my tables are coming up as issues whenever I go to the accessibility checker report that it gave me. So I go to tags and I find table and it's not a T, it actually says table, so that's convenient. Um, this is my first table, which I've actually already fixed. So if I were to click on table editor and then click on this first cell, it's gonna tell me that it's a cell row. I've already fixed it, but I could also do something else and I could click on table editor again and click this little button right here, this cell that says show cell type. TH means that it's table heading and then TD means that it's data. If I do that, then it tells me that this entire row is TH, which means that they're headings and this entire column, are al they're also headings and that everything, these two, all, everything in these cells here are table data. So I'm gonna fix the second one, which only has a table header heading row, <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna click here first on the table itself and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to table editor. And so it's telling me that everything is table data, which is not true. There's actually a heading here. So I'm gonna click on the first one, which is points and I'm gonna hold down the shift key and just click on the every, every other cell in that row that's also a header, percentages and letter grade. And then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna to go to table cell properties. I'm gonna to go to header cell, and then I'm gonna scroll over here under scope to header row. And so now it's changed to TH. It's recognizing all three of these as a part of a header row or a table heading. This is still table data though. So this one, unlike this one, does not have a, a header column in that table. Does that help? Yes. This was great. Thank you, Professor Wren. You're welcome. You're welcome. And, and just, you know, play, make mistakes, play around with it. <laughs> um, An ally will tell you what's, what's <laughs> messed up. <laughs> it will point it out. So um, I also went in and fixed the, yeah, I did. I went into file properties and you can fix your title here. So you go to the description screen, you can fix your title. If you have an article that has keywords, you put that here. It also tells you if your PDF is tagged, but just because it's tagged doesn't mean that it's in the right order. So I have one here where I have H6 and H3. This should be H4, right? So I can fix that and make it H4. Well, actually this should be H3, it's the same level. So now it's correct. So you, can, you have to kind of scroll through because you can actually do it automatically here. Like if it showed that I had tag issues, I could just hit fix, but then you want to check the tags to make sure they're what you want them to be. And you want to check the reading order by clicking this to make sure everything is reading like you want it to read first, second, third, okay? Because you just never know what's happening. Any and the questions? reading order will become even more important when uh, Dr. Wren talks about PowerPoint because mm -hmm. it's important how the slide order is read in PowerPoint. Is it going across or down or any of mm -hmm. that? So the next workshop, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Could you please explain again, how does, if you have a document in, uh, let's say PowerPoint or Word, how you save it as a, as a PDF to give it its title? Definitely. So here is my document in Word. Mm -hmm. and um, to give a Word document a title so you don't have to worry about it popping up as an issue in Ally yeah. when you convert it to a PDF, just go to File, and then go over here to where it says Title, and you can click on that, and I could delete it, and then paste it back, and that's how you add a title in Word. Okay. 
Okay. And then when you save it, you do not want to go to file save as. You don't want to do it that way. You actually, if you're going to create a PDF, you want to use this tool over here where it says create and share Adobe PDF. So you want to hit create PDF and then save it that way. Okay. Um, which means you need to have Adobe to do that. Yeah. Yes. And I put the path and Cougar web um, okay. into the okay. chat. It's, All it's right. like Cougar web, my workplace tab, and then on the bottom left, academic okay. software center. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? I think went over everything, list, headings, tables, titles, primary language. Oh, bookmark, just in case you want to know. Um, this is the bookmark icon. So the for the tags that I've, this is, this, this one's broken. But anyway, for the tags that, that, that show up, it's actually showing the ones that are here, the ones that are correct here. So when it's not correct, it's not going to show all the, all the bookmarks. But if I want to add a bookmark, I can definitely do that. So if I want this to be a bookmark, I can highlight it and hit add bookmark. Ah, why is it not doing it? Why is it not doing it? Weird. Okay, so I'm just gonna click add bookmark and then type it. And then I can move these around so that it's where it needs to be. And this needs to be higher there. Okay, you can just move them around to make sure that they're in the right order. But if you do everything correct in Word, your books, your, it would translate to bookmarks in, in your Adobe file when you create it. No problem. I'm still here if you have questions, but you all don't have to stay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Wren and, and uh, Pamela for being here and, and giving us this great presentation and answering so many great questions. I do want to remind everybody that um, this has been recorded. So if you want or need to revisit any of the things that Kimberly showed us how to do today, um, I will be uploading a link to the recording um, on the CTL website recordings page um, probably tomorrow or Friday. So um, I know I'll probably be rewatching it again to catch some of the things that I missed and uh, you'll be able to do so as well. All right, if there are no more questions for Kimberly or Pamela. Um, I wanna thank everybody for being here today. And um, I hope you will join us for Kimberly's next session on July 7th, as well as uh, three other uh, workshops that the CTL is sponsoring this summer. Um, you can find those, uh, find details of those events and the registration links on the CTL events page. And I'll probably be sending out some more flyers as well. So just watch your email for those. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.